the grid. And here we are, round 29 of the championship. Isaac Barashi starts on pole with Josh Irfan alongside. Dowie to Decker and Kai Darinani on row two. Then it's Jack Sherwood and Noah Lyle completing our top six. Next row, James Higgins and Pat Hoytson row are followed by Canato Lee. Gustav Johnson leads the rookie championship. That could get sewn up here. Freddie Slater next, he's back for more. And second in the rookie championship is Gabe Stilp. He's on the outside of row six. Mika Abrahams next up from Jimmy Pazik, then it's Dion Galda back to right. First race of the weekend for him after a one race ban. Then Will McIntyre, Akil Alibi had a penalty, so he goes a little bit further back. He's on the inside of row nine. Deegan Fairclough, who qualified P2 yesterday next up in the back of the grid, the championship leader, Louis Sharp. So this is like traditional short oval racing, which my roots were in watching years ago, where we've got the top of the championship man at the back of the grid because he had double pole yesterday. So yeah, with Alibi getting a penalty in the last race, that's actually put him between McIntyre and Sharp. So that's an extra place for McIntyre, which is actually going to help him to try and get away and get some more points over Sharp. But uh, I don't think um, this is uh, this is going to be easy for McIntyre. I think Sharp's going to be pushing hard. It's going with him the whole race. So I think this is going to be a, a, a close battle. Uh, both got the onboard, so I'm sure we'll be seeing plenty of action from the onboards from both these championship rivals. But uh, let's, uh, let's see what they can do. It is a treat having both on boards, and thank you to the ITV team for facilitating that. It's giving you the best possible coverage of those races as they come through the field. And this penultimate race of the season, an important championship, a very important formula, front of the grid. Barashi gets away slowly. Rocket start by Josh Erfan for Carlin. Rodin Carlin go around the outside, and it's Erfan who leads. We've got a good battle on. A couple of the virtuosi cars getting swallowed up in these early stages, but Erfan got away well. Yeah, Lyle got away as well. He, he, um, he's up to fourth now, trying to go on the outside, going through Druid, but he's going to get hung out to dry there as he gets pushed wide, so he's down in fourth still, but great start from Irvan. He's going he for that. Oh, Lyle oh. locking up as he looks for third place. Now, this is interesting because now we go on board with Rodin Carlin driver, Louis Sharp, looking to try and come through the field. Deegan Fairclough immediately in front in the Rocket car. Rocket scholarship, of course, that he won in the sim racing competition last year to get this driver as they go through on the inside of Dion Galva, who's uh, having his first race action this weekend. Now, the fact that we've got Irvan and also Lyle up front is significant for Carlin's team points, Phil, because it's the, the top two drivers from the team that score the points. So although we're keen on Louis Sharp, we've got the team cup as well to go. This is so close. So that's McIntyre in front of Sharp there. So look at our teammate Gowd is oh! getting in the way of this. He's just gone past him, but now he's put a place between the two jumping rivals. So back on board with McIntyre now as they go through Sheen. He's obviously got to try and keep in front of Sharp and just keep trying to pull away, but that was close there with, uh, with the two of them being uh, running in uh, 16th and 17th. Sharp looked a lot more relaxed out of the two drivers yesterday in the build-up to the meeting. I didn't get a big chance to talk properly to Will McIntyre. Certainly on the podium, you could see that Louis Sharp was happy to have that 13-point cushion. He was happy with the win. And Will McIntyre, I won't say looked rattled, but he, he looked the less happy of the two, and rightly so. You yeah, a good study of the screen now. Yeah, I was yeah, just looking to see who made that move into Paddock because someone threw it down the inside. I think it was actually Slater who's on the move, but uh, yeah, he's uh, he's made a, a good run up to sixth now and he started in 11th place. So Goodness me. he's definitely the man on the move coming through the field. He is, isn't it? So it's Irfan from Barashi who's had a, a good first lap, holding on to second position from young Jack Sherwood who's having a good run. Then it's Lyle, De Decker, Slater in sixth, as you said, Phil. And then James Higgins, so many different race winners we've had in this championship over the year. Why is this gone? Yeah. I think Lyle has actually got a, a bit of damage. I've just seen his front wing. You can see it flapping away. Yeah, you can. Look, you can see his wing is damaged. Slate He's obviously three. had some contact. That's two, three, four cars going yeah. through now. So real shame for Lyle after an amazing start. And for Carlin in terms of the team's cup, which we'll need to try and keep my eye on as we go. We've got high tech running uh, in second position in that. Back on board with Louis Sharp. He's already made it up into 14th place, making good progress. Gal is still ahead of him. McIntyre in front of him. McIntyre about to try and make a pass as well. There's Lyle as well, just yeah. letting his uh, teammate through. But he hasn't helped too much. Uh, neither is Gowder at this stage. But uh, he has only got one place. I think, uh, where's uh, Maldon McIntyre? Yeah, McIntyre, Gowder, Sharp. So let's see if Gowder comes into play here. To score championship points, as well as place gained, you need to get into the top eight on the reverse grid race. And uh, it is so busy. A couple of fans yesterday telling me this is the race they really, they love the F4 racing, but this really brings it alive. I think we might go to a partial reverse next year. The coordinator is telling me, Gowder having a 
good look at getting stuck in there. Sharp's gone round the outside of Gouda going through through it. I think he's made it stick. Yeah, he so has. Now he's got another high-tech car in front of him. I think uh, McIntyre's just got a little bit of a gap. Uh, now, is Pasek involved there? Deegan Fairclough going for a pass here on Gabe still. So, Fairclough, remember, was second yesterday. Started on the back row of the grid, effectively the last two. And it's going to go through in the rocket car. And here's Mac having a go at him as well. McIntyre side by side, still on the inside. Left of shot as we look at them. McIntyre in the five, gets his nose ahead of Deegan Fairclough. Oh, oh what a move. Great Round start. the outside, three abreast as they go through Hawthorne. Someone's run wide there and they're going to spin. Yeah, that's the Fortec car. He's going to disappear the, uh, the go into the barrier there that was Mika Abraham's pole man last time out of course at Silverstone on board with Louis Sharp but McIntyre is doing everything possible to take this as close as possible to race three yeah that was a good bit of driving from those three drivers as they were going three best up into Hawthorne he managed to go around the outside and make two places and that's uh, Abraham's there. I think he might be beached there if he can just get pushed off the grass he might be able to stop the safety guard from coming out Oh, no, we are getting a safety car. We were hoping that it wasn't going to be. There is Mika Abrahams, the car stranded. Marshall Power required again to get that back onto track. It gives us a chance to, to have a breather and take stock. And I wanted to say to viewers that have just watched the British Touring Car Championship, F4 has, has double resonance, doesn't it? Because it, it is FIA accredited. It's the stepping stone to F1. Oscar Piastri winning yep. the... Uh, sprint race yesterday at the Grand Prix meeting. Um, he was in this how many years ago? Three, four years ago? Yeah, I think it was a bit longer than that now. I think it was 2017, maybe? Poss uh, yeah, yeah, so maybe a bit longer than I'm thinking. Yeah. But So you've got that tangible link. And also, cast your back, this was Formula Ford before it was F4. Mm -hmm. Ten years since Dan Kamish yeah. won every race he started yeah. in Formula Ford, as it was then. And he's now touring. So it's relevant to touring cars, it's relevant to the single seater ladder this championship, more so than ever. But yeah, Piastri uh, finishing second in this championship, though, a few years ago now, uh, now in Formula 1. But you can see here, that was, uh, that was Fairclough just running a little bit wide. And then further back, we saw the Fortec car of Abraham's just losing it, going too wide, couldn't manage to keep it straight. Managed to keep it out of the wall, though. Obviously, we just caught the Goodyear banner there, but uh, unfortunately, couldn't keep the momentum going now because the car sits so low onto the ground, it's just beached. So, as you can see, can't get uh, any traction there, even though it is very dry at the minute. It's just uh, not enough to get that car uh, going again. But the marshals are doing a good job to get it out of the way and hopefully get underway, racing underway once again. We hope so. Is that just going to be pushed to safety? He's not going to get him back on the on the track and get him back to the pits. He'll have, hopefully have no going race three. But... Uh it's a, still a fair wait for these guys to do, and particularly on the grass as well, because the, the car is not going to help them, is it? No, no. And, uh, yeah, I was going to say it might be easier to, not that he's heavy, but get the drive out of the car to try and help move the car um, uh, into a uh, safe place. Now, interestingly, Phil, um, Gustav Johnson is back in 15th. He's actually the fifth of the rookies. And Now, is that a, a safety thing? Because, he, by my maths, he only needs to finish in order to secure the rookie championship but uh, he's quite a way back he started ahead of Stilp who was quicker in qualifying but had a, a penalty which dropped him back so yeah he does just need to finish apparently I, uh, I have been told by uh, the guys uh, at F4 and uh, he just needs to finish the race to, to, to win the rookie championship but yeah like you say he's, uh, he's playing it a bit too safe isn't he because Stilp's um, up into 10th place there whilst Johnson's in 15th he had a really good lead in the Rookie Championship a few rounds ago, and I don't know whether it was... It, it's never complacency with the driver, but whether it was nerves as, towards the end of the season, we just saw a couple of little results that didn't go his way, and it's, it's been a sort of nervous look over his shoulder as we get the running down towards the end of the season. Yeah, 33-point uh, gap there as it stands. Um, yeah, so Urban obviously doing a great job out front leading the race, but there's not a lot he can do about uh, trying to win this because, uh, yeah, the gap's just too big. Let's have a look at the, the top five and, and look at the names that we've got there. So it's Irvin from Barashi Sherwood, you, you'd fancy as maybe being a driver that could come up into the lead. Dedeka, possibly. Freddie Slater, though, made great progress from fifth. Podium's on the cards. How about a win from there, Phil? Ooh, that'd be hard, but, uh, yeah, with, uh, with Freddie Slater's record recently, it uh, uh, wouldn't surprise me if he managed to at least get a podium. He's, uh, he's had a win out in Italy doing the Italian F4, uh, and he's obviously wrapped up the Ginetta Junior Championship after having a record-breaking season. 
of winning about, I think, 15, 15 races this season, and he didn't even finish the season at all. You know, he had two two whole rounds left. Lights out on the safety Here we go. car. Let's see what happens. So, Josh Erfan for Rodin Carlin. Top points for them so far, potentially in the team's cup. Isaac Barashi is running in second place. Then it's Jack Sherwood, Dowie to Decker followed by Freddie Slater, then James Higgins and Canato Liam. McIntyre's not that far behind them either. McIntyre's actually already got himself up into the championship points in eighth place. So incredible start from him as they restart. And coming under pressure now is the second place man. Sherwood putting the pressure on. Might have a change for fifth place. Freddie Slater having a look. Thinks better of it there. The black car behind the blue and pink machine going down through Paddock Hill Bend up in towards Druids again. Yeah, you got Higgins and Lee behind him as well. I think Lee's going to be looking quite racy as we come to the end of this race. But yeah, you did see it right. Slater was throwing it down the inside of Paddock. But let's see now. Back on board with McIntyre. And that's his teammate, Pasek. So is he going to let him through to help him out? Or is he going to, going to race him? Oh, this, there's, there's Fairclough as well. Yeah. No, it's again, three abreast. Oh, oh, this is a worrying moment, isn't it? These open-wheel single-seaters. Let's see how that pans out. I tell you what, McIntyre and Pazik having a good go. We've got Canato. It's Lee, it's it's Lee yeah, isn't it, at the yeah. front. I was going to say Pazik was behind them. Canato's had a sort of quiet uh, uh, later part of the season to me in the number, number six, but it's number five that's coming through oh, on the outside. Side side. They still are side by side. Sort it out, lads. You wouldn't think these were teammates. And Deegan Fairclough isn't, and he will come through on the inside. There goes the rocket ship, as he calls it, through and past McIntyre. Yeah, Lee didn't help him out at all there, did he? He's, uh, he's kept in front of him, ran him a little bit wide, and that allowed Fairclough to come through. So now we have uh, McIntyre in ninth. It's Fairclough's moved to eighth, but we've got Sharp down in 12th. Here's uh, Gowder battling away to try and make up some more places. He's got Johnson in the mix as well, the uh, potential rookie champion. We've got another race to score points later on Slater, as well. Oh, Slater, Slater nearly. Oh! oh! And now did he force no, Decker into that mistake? It didn't look like there was any contact. It just looked I like... I mean, mentally went, um, forced him. Yeah, well, exactly, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it was uh, De Decker who just was a little bit wider because obviously he saw Slater come down the inside. But, yeah, I think he just got on the marbles. No grip out there and just ran wide. So, yeah, it was another great move uh, from Slater. Now he's up to fourth place. Sharp, meanwhile, chasing Jimmy Pazik. So that's the... Uh, teammate of the man he's challenging in the championship with Dion Calda is in behind the Rodin Carlin logo blazoned very proudly on the back cowling of that car those guys obviously not joining Formula One for the moment it was a, a little bit of a shame to hear same with high tech as you mentioned yesterday Phil in our coverage from yesterday's race but these cars make a superb sight on the Grand Prix loop as we go back with the championship leader the young Kiwi Louis Sharp at the moment Sharp is in 12, 12 positions at seven points that he will gain from this race. Oh, someone's had a big spin. Who's that further ahead as they've gone through onto the GP loop? So that's the Decker, I think. Yeah, the BWT car, who's uh, he's lost it through Westfield. And run a little bit wide, couldn't get off the grass. Big slide and then just can't control it as a big spin. Keeps it out of the wall, but... Yeah, and off the track more importantly yeah, as well, I guess. So. Yeah, well, both as important as each other, actually. Wall and track. Track means other cars. Wall means damage to the car and possibly driver as well yeah the Decker doing a good job somehow don't know whether that was fluke or skill but he uh, he's managed to uh, keep it out of the wall but I don't know is that him he's going against that's not going to be a that's safe car I hope we see Dowie to Decker back because he's a great little carter really good addition to this championship and with the yellow number rookie driver for this year he's done well he's had loads of rookie podiums he's been a, a strong man as as has Josh Irfan here so this is again with the reverse grid race you get tend to get the new race winners coming through Irfan's already had one it's at Silverstone the non-touring car uh, championship round. Now, points-wise, bottom right of the screen, Sharp, it will go down by one point at the moment, the uh, championship lead, but that's still quite handy for him. Deegan Fairclough still third. Deegan's off to the American Grand Prix, won another competition with Red Bull to go to the American Grand Prix. Heard about that. <laughs> Absolutely, so I, I hope he gets some recognition out there because he's third in the championship at the moment. Could possibly wrap that up as uh, we look at Louis Sharp, again, trying to get more points. Remember, another place gained for Sharp here We'll see him maintain the status quo of the oh, and he's having a go for it. Looks to the inside, looks to the outside. This is Jimmy Pazik, the young Aussie, right in front of him. So the Antipodean drivers having a good battle here. Yeah, you could see that uh, the teammates of the high tech cars, Pazik, and uh, and still battling away. That gave Sharp a bit of a run, but then Pazik saw him coming and had it covered as they went into Sheen. But can Sharp now get a good run coming out the last corner, get a bit of a slick stream and see if he can do anything on uh, on his championship rival's teammate? Interesting to see, wouldn't it? McIntyre back into eighth by 
virtue of De Decker not being in the race anymore. So McIntyre back into the championship points as well as places gained. And we'll see whether we get a change down towards the bet there. Gustav Johnson still uh, having a good go, isn't he? So Johnson uh, running. He's not going to make any more places up in the rookie category, but he might do in terms of overall. He's just passed his teammate Lee. So number six, Lee McIntyre's got past now. So let's see Does that if mean he... Fair Club has got past. Yes, it as well, looks yeah. like it. Yeah, yeah. I, can, uh, I just saw them going up to Druid, and I don't know whether Lee had a, had a problem coming out of turn one, but he, uh, he definitely lost a couple of places. Fair Club's going to get five charges for the most places game. Let's have a look and see what happens. Yeah, just left the door open there. It looks Maybe. almost like it was uh, team orders, but there is no radios in these cars, so it was obviously something talked about before the race. So, uh, yeah, great bit of teamwork, Lee letting him through. Yeah, Canato's not going to lose out, is he, by, you know, not letting him through, so or, or gain anything by not letting him through. So, I think it's a sensible move for the team. Nice that the drivers all, you know, it's, it's again, getting them ready for Formula 1, isn't right, exactly. it? Exactly, that's how it works, isn't it? We've seen it many times. <laughs> But uh, yeah, no, it's uh, it's down to Sharp to make some more places now because he's in 11th and I think McIntyre is in 6th place. Yeah, McIntyre, he's made up some points, isn't he, in this one, so we need to keep our eyes on. Uh, I say Fair Club probably the star in terms of overtaking, as he has been many, many times this, this season. He's still Irfan Sherwood now second, but actually third. Slater in fourth place. And it, it, oh, somebody so having a... Right. That is... That's Fair Club, is it? It was actually, yeah, was it? Yeah, someone, someone definitely had a bit of a, an issue through to They didn't lost any places. Fair class, the black car in that position anyway on track. So that's what made me make, make the uh, assumption to go back to Lily really Sharp once again. I'm going to get a replay for you. Yeah, it was. It was, yeah. Uh, Fair Club uh, just had a, a bit of a slide, like he did yesterday's race uh, through Sheen. He ran a bit wide but didn't lose any places. So he's on the absolute ragged edge to make sure he gets everything out of that car. Once again, with the fastest lap as well, like he did yesterday. So he's pushing hard. That's why he's making these small mistakes. But as the race goes on in this heat, the tyres will be going off and they will be losing a little bit of grip. I really hope Fairclough gets another shout at F4 next year because he, he's quick, he's proved that, got his qualifying sorted out this weekend as well. And going back to that Civ experience, you know, a thousand drivers entered that competition. No money can win a Sim competition. It's not about the best tyres or who does the most testing, it's the most skillful driver on the Sim. That's why he won it. That's why he's had two fastest laps this weekend at the front row. Yeah, exactly. He must have been practising on the Sim before he came here this That's weekend. what it's all about, isn't it? <laughs> But uh, uh, no, I have heard good things about him coming back next year, so that, would, uh, that yeah. would be great to see him back in this championship. I, I really do hope so. Family are lovely as well, so they'll be very welcome back as well. As uh, we look at the Louis Sharp still busy chasing Pazik. Pazik's been uh, never easy to pass this this year, and he's sort of building his experience moving up from Australian Formula Ford. I think he's going to stay over for the festival, which is in a couple of weeks' time. Maybe cheer on his compatriots there, but Sharp's really having to work hard for every point here. Yeah, you can see they're battling close and Zeke is doing a good job at keeping him behind, but Sharp's going to start getting frustrated soon. He keeps getting the run on him, but can't do anything with it. So let's see as they get a good run through Surtees, can he get the exit? It looks like Zeke's doing a fantastic job of keeping him behind. And of course, the thing with Sharp is, although he's not in the championship point scoring positions, he does get points for every place game. So if he doesn't finish, it's not a case of, well, it doesn't matter because he doesn't get the championship points. He's going to lose all those places, yeah. game points, yeah. and there are no drop scores, thankfully, in this championship. Still, still just ran a little bit wide there again through Hawthorne. We've seen a few people do that now. He's catching people out. He's got an aggressive exit curve. So as soon as you run a little bit wide in these very low, like I said, single-seaters, they do ground out and you can't get them any grip whatsoever because you're literally just wheel spinning over the exit curve. So you, you can see them running very wide as they're all pushing hard. Still, it's going to be a driver, another one that we want back next year to lose rookie stakes to come and maybe challenge the overall championship as this man Louis Sharp has done this year. Back though with our top two, Erfan being closed in on now by Jack Sherwood. Those clear from Isaac Brashy, who's doing a very good job. He's had rookie podia and at the moment he's working real hard to maintain an overall podium. Brashy, it's been a good driver so far. If he doesn't get it, he can be very proud of what he's done thus far. As Freddie Slater is now being caught by Deegan Fairclough. Fairclough looking on the inside of James Higgins. Plenty of race winners in this mix, Phil. Certainly isn't there. Yeah, you can see they're all scrabbling away there. That's allowed Brashy to get away a little bit, but that might mean that Slater can sort of get on terms with the P3 man. And you can see McIntyre and Fairclough trying to get a run on Higgins here. Oh. They've run side by side as they come out of 30s. 
I think he's made that place. Fairclough's lost that place. Yeah. Now can McIntyre get past Higgins? Yeah, he's going to have a very, very good look here. Is he going to go to the inside and have a look? He's got Fairclough all over him as well. Deegan will be careful. It's McIntyre. Just lose out a Let's little bit. Back. Lost momentum and Fairclough has gone back and through on the inside. Nick's another championship point away from the man second in the table. So it's the third place in the championship, man. He's out of overall contention, but matter of pride for him. Big stuff for the JHR team, who incidentally hold the lap record here on the Brands Hatch GP circuit. We'll come back to that, Phil. Yeah, as you can see there, he's tried to put him off, but he managed to get a run through Hawthorne's and dive down the inside, made up the place, but McIntyre tries to come back at him, but no uh, no luck for him on this lap. Joseph Lope, the lap record holder, 124, so they're uh, away, away from that. We probably expected that they would be as Josh have, and on the final lap goes Jack Sherwood in P2. Good to see Chris Tittman racing up on the podium. Great to see Isaac Barashi, another rookie, up for potentially another podium. So many, if I was a journalist, what story do you focus on here? The overall championship, but so many other subplots. But there certainly is, yeah. I mean, obviously, the, the rookie championship, the main championship, um, there's the final place on the podium as well. I do think Slater might have a chance. He's looking quick as he's trying to chase Barashi. He's not having to defend anymore, but these are the front runners, Irfan and Sherwood. Sherwood's done a great job getting to P2. And look at this further back. This is third, fourth, and fifth. Maybe Barashi's got uh, the legs on uh, Slater here. He's a little bit further ahead than I thought, but there's a few corners left. Can Slater do anything about it to try and get his first British F4 podium? He's going to try to, isn't he? Barashi wants the first overall podium as well in the 26 car. He's driven superbly in this race so far, and that is why we love the reverse grids. It gives these drivers that maybe traditionally have a bad meeting, gives them a second bite of the cherry. If they're drivers that are making their way up, it gives them a chance to get a first run off the front and hold on to it. And we've seen Barashi really develop as a driver this year, and that shows. This is showing too, because Rodi Carlin is going to take the winner's points here. Josh Erfan is going to take the win from Jack Sherwood, check and flag, Irfan, Brody Carlin win, Sherwood second for CVR, Barashi hangs on, a superb podium for him, great drive from Freddie Slater, through from 11th on the grid, into fourth position ahead of James Higgins, Deegan Fairclough, McIntyre, championship contender seventh, and where was Sharp, 11th place. Yeah, that's made it a little bit more open, hasn't it, going into the last race of the year. I've not done the sums, Phil, because <laughs> there was just so much going on, TSL do that graphic-wise. Josh Erfa and the Road in Carlin boys absolutely delighted with that um, and rightly so it's nice for Josh to get to get that win that's definitely going to help their team's championship as well isn't it I it mean does. Uh, who's the second Carlin driver in on the double down state to Higgins so the second sharp. Carlin driver was out he was out of the points so Carlin will take the 15 points for Carlin and high tech how many have they got in the top eight so they've got uh, McIntyre and Lee seventh and eighth yeah, so Carlin have outscored again. Yeah, so there we go. That's uh, heading towards their championship uh, once again. So team championship, I think, is looking like it's going to be Carlin, but they've got to secure it in the next round. We'll come back to points. Is how they finish round 29 of the Rocket F4 British Championship, certified by FIA. Josh Irfan takes the win by six tenths of a second from Jack Sherwood and Isaac Brashi, great podium for him. Freddie Slater fourth from James Higgins and Deegan Fairclough. Will McIntyre seventh championship going to the last race. He's second at the moment in the standings. Canato Lee was eighth. They've still been ninth from Jimmy Pizik. 11th went to Louis Sharp. He's got more work to do. Dion Gowder behind him, then Akil Alibi making good progress through the field too. Gustav Johnson finishes 14th. We think the rookie champion now he will be because he finished the race. Noah Lyle next from Kai Darinani and Pat Hoytsenroder. Dowie Dedeka recovers for 18th and issues sadly for Mika Abrahams. So the championship standings with one race left to go today under blue skies here at Brands Hatch. And leading the championship still is Louis Sharp. Sharp still there. Second position is Will McIntyre and the gap down to 10 points. Still very much all to play for. Remember in the race three, 10 points could be the difference between a couple of places. Deegan Fairclough third, Dion Gowder in fourth position. And then James Higgins and Jimmy Pizik from Canato Lee, Noah Lyle, Akira Alibi and Gabe still 10th. And the rookie champion, congratulations to the young Swede, Gustav Johnson, and also all the hard work done by Gabe still, the young Englishman who will annex second position ahead of Josh Irfan.